One of the most powerful stories that I have as an educator in bird language happened about four years ago when I was working with a group of teenagers in the coastal redwood forest in California. And um, we had just finished discussing the five different voices that you could use to decipher different movements of predators in the forest, whether it was an aerial predator like a hawk or an um, eagle, or whether it was a ground predator like a coyote or a bobcat. And so we were practicing and we had our backs to each other and we were just listening outward and we could decipher a companion call in, in the northwest, a call where you know uh, two birds were calling back and forth to each other and we could hear some singing to the west and then far beyond that singing we can hear an alarm, alarm call up in the canopy. Then when we turned to the south and looked underneath this redwood canopy on the forest floor where there was robins feeding and a couple varied thrushes feeding, we saw two male robins that were uh, aggressively attacking each other and that, that was another um, bird language call that we had discussed that happens in the springtime with territories being set up. and. Um, as we were listening there, we, we heard the uh, singing start to subside in the west and the alarm call intensify. And I caught one of the teenagers' facial expression. And I look up and this red-shouldered hawk is flying in. The two male robins that were fighting jump into the bushes. And one of, unfortunately, the slower robins that were there was there feeding got picked off by this red-shouldered hawk. In this surreal moment where the, the shaft of morning sunlight filtering through that otherwise dark redwood canopy became filled with these little chest feathers, these little red buffy feathers from the robin were drifting down. And it was those moments where time slows down and it was one of those moments that, you, as an educator, you hope all the teenagers that you work with can experience a glimpse of these kind of moments. And I was looking around to see, you know, how they were reacting to this, and they were completely silent for about a half a minute. And then Galen, one of the students, he turned to me and he says, "Do you hear that call, Scott?" And I said. I, I was listen for a second and I could hear in the bushes a robin calling. And he turned to the group and he says, you know what I think that call is? I said, what? And he says, I think that's a companion call with nothing calling back on the other end. And in that moment I realized that Galen was learning empathy from a robin. And I was reaffirmed for the thousandth time the power of nature mentoring for these teenagers because Galen, we had been, he had been in nature mentoring programs for three or four years at that point. And I believe if you took the average teenager off a of city street to watch that scenario, they probably would have been rooting for the red-shouldered hawk and oh did you see the blood and the feathers and that was so cool and instead this this 14 year old kid was realizing through the eyes of a robin what it must feel like to lose a loved one and that's the most powerful bird language story I have from a baggy pant wearing sideways hat teenager who understood a deeper connection to this world that we live in.